Hello everybody, I'm Michael and today we will cover part 2 of the widget tutorial. Now we will get a little bit more in depth with the widget system and I will also explain what the difference is between update functions or called update events and um, bindings. So I will also uh, I will also show you how they um, work differently in a real time example, so you will know what update events and um, bindings do differently. <coughs> Excuse me, I might sniffle around a little because I think I got a cold, and I have a pretty sore throat. So please bear with me. Okay. So first off, we will create a blank widget. So just go into your content browser, right click in an empty space, select user interface and then select widget blueprint. I think I will call it tutorial widget and we will open our newly created widget. Now we have our um, canvas and we will just use a button, so we drag in the button component and we will anchor it down to the bottom. So if you don't know what all these components do, please go back to the part 1 of the widget tutorial <coughs> and watch it. So now we anchored, it, uh, anchored the button to the ground or to the bottom. But we will also try to name this button something. So we will, uh, we will take the text component and drag it inside the button. We will change the text to something like um, enable slash disable. We will go to the color and opacity to make it a little bit more visible because the button is pretty um, is uh, pretty bright. So we will change the text color to black. Then we will go to the font properties and change the font size to 11. Oh, maybe 10. Yeah, 10 is better. We will compile and save. And then we will drag in a progress bar. So we will drag it into the canvas. We will scale it a little bit up, so we get a little bit more visual feedback. And we will anchor it to the, to uh, to the bottom left position. Okay, the rest will stay the same. And we will compile and save. Now, two things uh, are needed here. So, in order to... Um, to already prepare the update uh, events versus binding event, we will try to create them right off the bat. So go to the button properties, scroll down and then select the unpressed event and click on this plus sign, which will basically create this event inside our event graph. Then go back to the designer tab Click on the progress bar so we get uh, the properties and then go down to the person tab and select the bind button and then select create binding. This will create the binding for, uh, for the progress bar which you can find under functions inside uh, the blueprint. Now we will see this binding has a return value. We will first off not do anything with it, so we will leave it blank and just compile and save it. It's just that we ha already have our update function or update event set up and our um, binding set up. Now we will minimize the tutorial widget for the time being and we will open up our player character. So. When we have our um, character blueprint open, we will um, go to an empty space in the event graph and then right click and type in event begin play. 
Now, this node just triggers when we start a level. So we want to add our widget at the start of the level. So that's why we are using this node. The next step is to create the widget itself. So we right click, type in create widget and select create widget. We will just connect the widget with the begin play node and on the select class we will select our tutorial widget. Now this will essentially build our widget so we can access it in the game. But we need to, to uh, but we need to add it to the player screen too. In order to do so, we drag out from the return value of our widget, type in add to viewport and select the add to viewport node. So these three nodes will effectively add our widget to the player screen. Cool. So we compile, save and test it out in the level. Okay, it works, but it has some issues. The first one is that we can still rotate our player camera, but we actually want to access our widget, so that's a no-go. The next issue is that we can't click anything. That's because we don't have uh, click events enabled in our player controller and we have no cursor which is also in the player controller. So in order to fix it, we need to go back to our player character blueprint and just right click and then type in get player controller and select the node. This will get us access into the options of the player controller. And the player controller has the option of showing the mouse cursor and to enable the click events. So that's cool. That's what we exactly need. So drag out from the return value of the player controller and type, uh, type in <laughs> um, enable click events Oops. and select the second one, set enable click events. Check the checkbox and just drag it at the end of the add to viewport node and connect these two. Now drag out a second time from the player controller's return value and type in show mouse cursor and select the next one, the set show mouse cursor node. Check the checkbox because we want to have it enabled put it at the end of the other set node and connect them. Now if we compile and save it and try it out, we will have our mouse cursor and we will be able to click. Problem is, the widget is not in focus, so we need to double click to access our widget. And it still screws us over with our, player, uh, with our camera which is still rotating. So in order to fix that and to put our widget into focus, we go back to our player character blueprint, right click in an empty, uh, no, not right click in an empty space, but go to the widget node, drag out from the return value and type in, um, um, set input mode, and then select set input mode game and UI. We could also use the second one. The problem with the second one is just, if you have a pause uh, widget or a pause um, screen, for example, you can access the widget, but if you do that, you can't access it anymore with key presses. So this essentially just focuses on clicking events and disregards any other input, like keyboard events. So keep that in mind, and we will use the set input mode game and UI. Sorry for my dog barking, he's again a little bit well stressed out today. 
So, yeah. Okay. So put Z node at the end of the Z node and connect them. And our target pin here from our set input mode game and UI will be connected to the get player controller. Okay. So we are good to go. We can compile and save. And when we press play, we will be focused or our widget is being focused. Wonderful. So we can already click on it and it will react. Cool. So the next thing we need to do is to go back to our tutorial widget and go inside our event graph. Now we will have our update event here or our update function which is your is called on pressed and the on pressed is um, relating to the button so if we press the button it will execute this button uh, this event here so I will just right click type in print and select print string now we will just call it update event And we will just um, type in into the string pressed su successful. Now, if we test it out, it should only fire or execute when we click the button. And it does so. So this is not updated all the time it's just updated when we modify the button so uh, when we modify the state of the button now we go back to our tutorial widget and go inside our binding function and we'll access it and we will put a print string in here between the get person and the return node <clears throat> we will um, type in percentage and we will compile and save it and just comment it to um, binding. If we press play this time, it will fire off constantly. So here is the big difference between bindings and update events. A binding fires off all the time, even twice a frame. So this can be a lot taxing if you have multiple bindings running. So please keep in mind if you have multiple bindings running it can affect your performance. So be very careful with bindings. Buttons or update, ev uh, yeah, update events however just fire off if I modify the state of the component itself. So that's the main difference between a binding and an update event. Now there's a second um, difference between these two. The first thing is this one is more like a trigger and trigger something when we click on it or modify the state. Now a function actually gets us uh, gets a value back or rather sends a value back you can't call a function which you could normally do with other blueprints so this binding or this function inside the widget can only be um there can only be retrieved data but not sent data to it that's a, pro a problem as you can see if you want to modify the progress bar with the percentage but there's a way to work around it and that's when we go back to the event graph go to the left panel and select add new and then select the variable we will type in percentage and we will change it to a comma value which is called a float now the percentage will be on zero and 
then we will go, go back into our function, drag in our percentage variable and select get. We will uh, connect it with the return value of the return node. And what this basically does is that it will take our variable and put it inside the function. That way we can access our function and update it with new values, like updating the progress bar. So that's a workaround. We use a variable to pass it into the binding itself. Cool. So we will just go back to the widget toot character, or our blueprint character, and we want to increase and decrease our percentage based on a press or a key press. So right click, um, type in the key press Q. You can also use any other key, but I will use the Q um, key for this um, blueprint. Then I will right click and type in flip flop, which is a pretty funny name, but it's basically just a switch. So when I press once the Q uh, key, it will fire off the A executable pin. And if I press a second time, the B execution pin will fire off and it will auto always alternate between the A and the B value based on the Q presses. So it's a pretty cool um, thing. Just connect it to the Q pressed event and then right click again and type in add timeline and select it. I will call it increase the decrease percentage and what a timeline basically does is that it changes a value over a certain period of time. So if you want to increase something incrementally uh, with um, over maybe 5 or 10 or 15 seconds you can use it with a timeline. It is ca actually an alternative for uh, for updating it with event tick or uh, with frame based um, updating over time. So to access the timeline we double click on the timeline and we will get this curve um, editor. We will use a float because ours is a um, comma value. So we will select the float or the float button here and it will create a new curve. We will call it percentage. And to make a point on this curve, we hold down the left shift button and then left mouse click on the curve itself. This will create a point. I will change the time to zero because I want to start on zero and the value will be kept at zero. Now I hold down the left shift again and left click and I will change the time to 5 because we have the length of 5 up here which you can change and the value will be on 1 because remember the um, progress bar just goes from 0 to 1. Okay, so go back to the event graph then um, take the A value and connect it to the play from start and then take the B value and um, put it into the rever reverse from end execution pin. This first one will play the timeline and the second one will reverse it and reverse our effects or our, our timeline. Now the last thing we need to do is to update our variable in our tutorial widget. To access it, we can just go to our widget node, drag out from our return value and search for percentage and select set percentage. Now just drag it down to the timeline, connect it with the percentage um, green pin here and connect it with the update execution pin. This way we will, um, when we press the Q button, 
um, execute the timeline and it will update our percentage variable inside our widget. And when we press again Q, we will reverse the effects and update our widget variable again. So it will empty and not be full again. Okay, so just let's try it out, minimize it and press play. And when I press the Q button, it will fill the progress bar. And when I press it again, it will empty the progress bar. So you can do a lot of stuff, but remember, bindings are um, updated every frame or every twice a frame. So that can get a little bit of a performance problem if you have too much running or too many running. And this basically concludes the part two of the widget tutorial. Now, in the last part of the tutorial, we will get a little bit more in depth with the, with the widget and we will create two examples, one more advanced than the other. And we will also integrate composited widgets, which just means multiple widgets inside a main widget and how we can access it and play with it around. And yeah, that was, will basically be the part three of the widget tutorial. So I hopefully see you in the next one and I wish you a wonderful day and see ya.